On February 6th, two massive earthquakes rippled through Turkey and Syria. There are widespread scenes of utter devastation. The death toll just continues to rise. Turkish rescue teams continuing their hunt for survivors. Seismic waves were detected around the globe. Here, you can see them ripple through Europe. And it can all be traced back to this line here. This is a map of the Earth. I'm almost certain you already knew that, but what I want to show you is this. These are tectonic plates. They're a bit like jigsaw pieces that make up the Earth's crust, and they're essentially floating on molten rock below them. That means they're constantly moving, and it's this movement that creates mountains, volcanoes, and yeah, earthquakes. So the, the most common cause of earthquakes is stress buildup in the um, surface or the crust of the Earth. This is Hugh Glanville, a senior seismologist at Geoscience Australia. So there are uh, multiple types of earthquakes that uh, can occur on plate boundaries or faults. So there's um, earthquakes where the crust is moving, one's moving under the other one. And as that happens, it pulls the, the top one down a little bit. And then as that releases, it springs back. You can also have boundaries where it's just butting up against each other and building mountains as, as the stress pushes them together. And you can also have uh, plates that are moving past each other. Uh, and as they move past each other, um, they're moving in this manner. So either left, right or right, left. The best way to think about it is to picture two bits of sandpaper trying to move against each other. As it locks, it'll get stuck and can't really move. But over time, enough pressure and stress builds up that it'll quickly jolt apart. Now, imagine that happening below our feet, and you've got kilometres and kilometres of the Earth's crust sliding metres past each other in an instant, releasing a massive ripple of energy. And that's what happened in Turkey. Remember this line I mentioned at the start? That is the East Anatolian Fault Line, and it's where the first big quake happened, as these two plates slid past each other. Part of Turkey actually sits at the intersection of three different plates. The African plate is moving northward into the Arabian, and it means this part of the world is quite seismically active. The massive quake hit just after dawn when most people were quietly sleeping. Three days after the initial quake and there's still hope of survivors. After a freezing night, trapped under the rubble, this man was rescued. This was the most violent the region has seen since 1936, measuring in at a magnitude of 7.8. That number, by the way, 7.8, is a measure taken from something called the Moment Magnitude Scale. That's a scale most seismologists use to quantify just how much energy was released and how big an earthquake was. The difference between each magnitude isn't exactly a straight line, though. It's a logarithmic scale, which means each step up the scale is 10 times more shaking and 32 times more energy released. So a 7.0 magnitude earthquake is roughly 1,000 times stronger than a 5.0. And a 7.8 is 15 times stronger than that it's the equivalent of around 15 billion kilos of TNT exploding at once. Bang! And then the shaking. And I thought, oh, it must be a bomb going off. And I asked one of the girls and she said, there's a bomb going off. It just shook and everything just caved in. The biggest earthquake in Australia's recorded history was around 6.7 and happened back in 1988 near Tennant Creek. We sit right in the middle of a plate. So most of the seismic activity around our neck of the woods actually happens away from our shores, in places like Indonesia, the Southwest Pacific and New Zealand. But occasionally we do feel a rumble here and there, as stress from the border of the plate builds up and transfers towards the middle, causing something called intraplate earthquakes. Earthquakes both here and, in fact, well, everywhere are really hard to predict. Seismologists like Hugh will generally look at the history of an area, whether there are active fault lines there or how long it's been since a major earthquake. 
Preparing people for major destruction like this, though, is almost impossible. 